YouTube, this is Rubix33, and this is going to be the first video of my PhoneGap tutorial series. All right, <coughs> for all you who are interested in PhoneGap, maybe even don't even know what it is too much, just been hearing all about the, all the buzz online. Um, PhoneGap is a framework that allows you to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, as well as some jQuery magic to make phone apps that work cross-platform. They'll work on Blackberry and I on iPhones, Androids, and Windows phones alike um, without too much tweaking. So there, um, there is a catch though. I mean they're not not going to be probably making Angry Birds. Um, it is they're not native. It is a web-based application. So what it does is a browserless web page basically that you're displaying as the app. Um, and then when you call certain JavaScript functions such as native functions of a phone such as the accelerometer or uh, uh, menu buttons or the um, GPS stuff like that that will then be translated by PhoneGap when you build your application into native code so then it'll work um, with your app um, but uh, PhoneGap is really great. There's a lot of apps that use it because a lot of apps don't need the uh, graphics capabilities of native apps such as like you know Java for Android or Objective C for iOS. Um, so it's a really quick, easy way to make a good-looking app that works well, um, and it's great for those who are already familiar with web technologies. I mean, if you're a programmer, you either probably know C++, Java, stuff like that, or you probably know a lot of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So that was the whole idea behind this. Um, so if you guys are here trying to learn how to get started, um, first of all, I've seen a whole lot of videos people ask, so I'm going to take care of it right now. Uh, other videos I've been watching on YouTube about PhoneGap. Um, this is not a program, it's a framework, so it works on anything. It's actually just like a service. Um, once we build our first application, we will upload it to PhoneGap and they actually take your code and build it and then you can download it for any device. Um, so we'll, we'll do that. It works on Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever. So don't worry, you don't need a specific kind of computer for this. Um, all the software that I will be using here will be cross-platform. So any software that I particularly use in this video will be available on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Um, is all most of it's open source, so they always make it cross platform. Alrighty, you can go to the PhoneGap website, you can get some really good information from there. Um but don't uh <coughs> don't get too ahead of yourself and start downloading Eclipse and stuff like that. Um because we actually won't be using Eclipse. That may be kind of a shocker to some people. I know um pretty much everyone that makes PhoneGap apps or you know they make Android apps, you know, they use Java, they use Eclipse. Great program, don't get me wrong, but we're not going to use it. If you want to use it for coding, go for it, but you will not need to download any of the Android tools or anything. So uh, totally ignore that. I'm even on the PhoneGap website here, when you do getting started, uh, when you do or the developer, get started, and if you go down to here, get started with Android, and they'll start telling you all kinds of stuff, and you're going to be freaking out because it says, set up your path environment variable on Mac OS, Mac OS, and it'd be like freaking out, oh great, this is all complicated. And some of the setup takes a little while, <laughs> especially if you don't have super fast internet, um, it takes a while to download. We will not be using Eclipse. If you want to use it uh, for coding, go for it. If you want to use, you know, Dreamweaver or Sublime Text or whatever you use, Notepad, um, go for it. What I will be using, uh, personally and is uh, cross-platform is you can use Aptana Studio it is a really good program there's my Aptana Studio it's free um, it is actually a, a plugin for Eclipse that does the syntax highlighting and whatnot but you can also get the standalone version so here's what the standalone version looks like it's pretty basic that's what I like about it I like my environments to be pretty basic especially if what I'm doing is just coding, you know, I don't need too many fancy drag and drop stuff, so you know, so if we go to like phone gap tutorial or some of the stuff we'll be doing. Um here I'll load up like uh 
my little hello phone gap example here and here it is and so the nice thing I really like about Aptana is a few things that are really nice um, the code completion is really awesome I mean as you're typing it's suggesting stuff it's suggesting variables you made everything um, and the code highlighting um, syntax highlighting is actually editable you can change it to whatever you want um, you know you could change it to all kinds of different things rails envy you know eye plastic all kinds of stuff and you can even edit it and make your own custom theme <laughs> if you like I personally like Monokai dark so that's what I'm gonna be sticking with um, but you can play with it all you want um, you know it's got you can you know open and close tags so that's like the body tag you know I can the head there and then it kinda is a preview if I'm over it um, it works really great I like Aptana for phone gap apps it's not gonna be you're not gonna have that much code because <laughs> it is just basically GUI for the most part I mean you'll have some button clicking and and other stuff and some basic you know JavaScript but for the most part you're basically making a menu system um, now granted later on if you get more advanced you know you might be making Ajax calls and all kinds of cool stuff but for now it won't be too bad so that's what I use um, you can download Aptana if you want that's gonna be what I'm gonna be using otherwise use whatever you want um, NetBeans like I said Eclipse, Notepad, I don't care. As long as you can code in it. So that's kind of the difference that uh, between me and I think a lot of tutorials that I've seen on YouTube um, is is my kind of approach to that. I like being more free in how I program and as long as you can get it done. So then you might ask though is if you did do some reading or have looked at some other videos um, how are we going to emulate a device? You know, we build an app, well, how do we test it? You know, I mean, not everyone has a, you know, has a s smart device. Um, a lot of us do. And even if all of us did, you know, that that's limiting to what we can test on. You know, um, you know, you might not have an iPad, but I, you know, I have a tablet, you know, Android tablet. So, I mean, you can only test on the iPad. And actually, the iPad, we won't be able to test. Um, we won't be able to test on any of the Apple devices. You'll need a license for that. Um, so, for this... Um, the best thing to test on is if you actually have an Android device, they're great for that because you can test on them. It doesn't cost any money. You don't need a developer's license to test or even give your app to your friends. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. So the best way, or the way we're going to emulate it, is if you kind of knows what browser I'm using. I'm using Chrome. I particularly like Firefox, but as a developer, I have come to appreciate Chrome. <laughs> Um, especially for some of the cool features and plugins that it has. Um, and that one feature is right up here, it's Ripple. Most people don't know this, they'll get Eclipse and they'll install all the Android stuff. More power to you, but a lot of people may be programming on a little, you know, crappy H, you know, crappy little HP laptop or something. Or even like a note, a little notebook. You might be programming on a notebook. You know, I don't care what you uh, particularly program on. But if you're trying to use Eclipse in the uh, emulator, that that sucker takes a lot of juice. <laughs> um, there's ways to tweak it if you have the uh, right amount of RAM um, to get it to load a lot quicker. Um, but it's not going to be as smooth, and the emulator is limited to Android, so you can emulate a few Android tablets and other Android stuff but you know maybe you want to build a you know test on a iPad without having a developer license and you know even if you had the developer license so you could have every single iPad and then you're gonna have you know the iPhone 3, 4, 4S, 5 I mean it'd just be crazy so what we're gonna use is a Ripple emulator so what we'll need is you'll need to download Google Chrome so that'll be something you need and then make sure when it's downloaded that you have the ripple emulator um, you can just like open up a new tab and click down here and it goes to your apps I have a few apps but you probably won't have anything you just click on the Google Chrome store um, and then make sure ripples in there um, 
you know, just search for apps and search for Ripple. Woohoo! Look at that. What do you mean? Oh, not home. I want all apps. Oh, it's not an app. It's an extension. Never mind. Sorry. There you go. It's actually still in beta. Um, it's been changing constantly. It's not out of beta yet. I'm hoping it will be soon, but it might be a little while. It's a really great um, emulator. So, if you want to see it in action, I'll open up my Aptana, and I will. will uh, I have a bunch of config configurations here from other web stuff, but open it with Chrome. And then you briefly saw it, it kind of flashed like it's a normal web page. And now, if you look here, here is Ripple. Uh, Ripple will emulate a wide range of devices. And unlike um, the Eclipse Android emulator, not only is it not limited to the emulating for Android, but it has way more functionality. Look at this. I, I mean, I can change my longitude and latitude. So if I'm doing stuff with geolocation, on the phone, I can test that. Um, you know, I can test what direction I'm facing, my altitude. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. You can network status, so you can change this, and this will fire events. And so you want to tell the user, hey, oh, you don't have 4G no more. So, you know, blah blah blah, or whatever. You're making an app. You can know, um, or if they're not on Wi-Fi, hey, the rest of this thing that's going to be downloaded or my app uses a lot of bandwidth are you sure you want to use this over your over your data um, so there's a lot of cool stuff in here there's configurations uh, you can fire different events like when, when the device is ready that'll be the main one we'll be using but like on pause maybe it'll uh, pause it or bring up a menu you know when you go offline when you press the menu button maybe you want to pop up a menu you know when they press the little menu button um, common one. It's really fun to play with the accelerometer. I mean, you could even, uh, with the birth of HTML5 now, you could even do some cool HTML5 effects or even like a mini game. You know, maybe as they're tilting that you are moving a little marble along a maze, you know, and as it tilts, maybe your perspective of the maze changes so it actually looks 3D. It might look three-dimensional. Um, here's the information of the platform and whatnot. You can use the platform for like WebWorks and BlackBerry if you're uh, developing for them. Otherwise, we can use Apache Cordova, PhoneGap, 1.0. You could go to 2.0 if you want. Oop. No, you could go to 2.0. Yay. And then you can devices. There we go. See? Way more devices. I mean, quite a few devices. And it's not limited to Android. I mean, you got your Blackberries. You got your. You know, got Nokia's, you got iPhone, um, like an Acer, some generic stuff. You know, I can go to iPhone. They don't have an iPhone 5 yet. Hmm. Well, they'll be getting there. They did the iPhone 5. The iPhone 4. And there we go. And that's what it'll look like. Uh, so it's super quick. I mean, look at that. I'm just clicking. I just click and boom, it changes automatically. Like, whoa you know might want to do something with that it's gonna cut it off it's if you have such a small device you know versus this blackberry <laughs> i like the blackberry they really go overboard with with how it looks with the image it's like okay yay turn off turn off oh it's highlighting everything so that is ripple uh... so you d all you need is your favorite uh, web programming uh, IDE or text editor. You'll need Google Chrome with Ripple, and then you're pretty much set to go. Um, I will be posting uh, links to get you some tools and whatnot um, to help with that. Um, like Ripple, for instance, when you're using with Google Chrome, has a few little bugs per se. It's because Google doesn't like it when you're when you're trying to load a web page that's not from a server so it's freaking out like why are you running a oh, you know HTML uh, file from your computer and it's just see so enable extensions allow file access from files so oh I can delete this one too I don't need this I was trying to get my WebGL to work it's actually just a setting but 
So I'll be posting this below to help you guys. This all you have to do is uh, paste this at the end of the target location. Um, if you don't know what this is exactly, so you just like click on it. Don't double click. Right click properties, and then put it at the end, the very end after all your where the location of your Chrome is. I might actually make a download on on my website for this. Um, maybe just I'll, I'll zip everything up. And is most likely you'll have Chrome should be installed in the same location on your computer as mine, so then it'll work. So as long as you have Chrome installed first, this will work. Uh, and I'll probably make a zip for all that because we are going to also in the next tutorial start with some of the basic layout of a PhoneGap app, and having all this already in there for you is be pretty helpful. It's just linking, you see, to the Jerry jQuery mobile website to get the code. Um, if you have really slow internet, it may be advisable to actually download um, the code um, so it's local on your computer. Um, but otherwise, it, I mean, you probably have to be like on dial up or something uh, for that to really be an issue. Um, but otherwise, linking it is actually the best. Um, supposedly, it's quicker to some degree with what, when you're actually doing like a normal web page um, but maybe it is maybe it isn't I kinda doubt it but either way this will be helpful so we don't have to download any of the tools so then that just takes that from the jQuery mobile website and then you can use their tools so I'll be posting links uh, for a kind of probably, probably just a zip zip folder of a bunch of stuff for templates and whatnot so we can get going um, Oh yeah, <laughs> I was doing the 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 wrong way. Body unload, you know. Never mind. Anyway, so guys, have any questions or uh, questions, concerns, comments, likes, dislikes, suggestions for me? Uh, this is like my first big video. This will be my first long video tutorial series. So you guys have anything you want to give me some constructive criticism? Go for it. Happy to learn. Um, glad to teach what little I know. <laughs> I don't know that lot, a lot, but I'll teach what I know. Um, yeah, if you guys want to know specific things, specific questions uh, about how to get this set up or whatnot, go for it. Um, questions about setting up Aptana. Uh, my next video, I will be covering that a little bit. Covering about how to set some of this stuff up in Aptana, if that's what you cho chose to use. If you're following me, a lot of you probably will. Um, but if some of you are you know, more experienced developers you might be using something else. So something you're more familiar with, more power to you. So, all right. I hope uh, this was a quick, kind of quick, rough introduction to PhoneGap. Um, in my next, like I said, my next video, we'll be covering a little bit more on how this all works, and we'll be start making our our first uh, PhoneGap app. All right. Take care, YouTube.